Hello, 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 and welcome to the second in our photography locked down series of challenges. First of all, I just want to say I'm blown away by the entries in the previous one in week one in the heart of the home is the kitchen. I'm just blown away by that stuff. Guys, you're rocking it. Some of you put so much work into that. Please, please, please keep doing it this time and keep sharing this competition. Let's really grow this community. Let's help people really get some benefit out of it. I got so much benefit just scrolling through and looking at your pictures. Absolutely fantastic. So what are we going to do this week? I've got a little list of notes here because you know what a scatterbrained, you know what I am. And I don't want to forget what I've got to say. So today, this week, theme is the colour of life. What is the colour of life for you? Because it's going to be different for everyone. Don't get too hung up about an accurate interpretation of the theme. But be more hung up about taking an awesome picture like we had last week. Really think, stretch your creativity, your use of light, composition. Think of little photo techniques that you could use to bring these things to life, yeah? To make it interesting. The colour of life. This week's hashtag is going to be PLD life. It's on screen now. It's going to stay down there throughout this video. You must enter that hashtag when you post the picture into the group because images without that hashtag, we don't know if you're entering or not. We haven't got time to contact everybody much as we'd love to. You must use that hashtag because then when we search in the group for that hashtag, your picture will show up and the judge will see it. Judge, who have we got this week? We've got another awesome dude, we really have. We've got a guy by the name of David Newton. David is another educator as well as photographer. David uh, educates all over the world for Canon. He shoots all over the world for various different people. His images are completely stunning, as you can see. David has been picture editor of Natural History Picture Agency. He's been technical editor of Canon's EOS magazine, a trainer speaker for Canon, ambassador for all sorts of brands, including Sandis, Manfrotto and ISO. He's a finalist in the 2019 Travel Photographer of the Year and British Photography Awards. You know, he's a really cool dude. He knows his stuff and he's a really, really, really lovely guy too. I'm really privileged to know him as well as the other awesome people who've offered to judge. So what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make this one work? The color of life, what is the color of your life? What is the color of my life? Now, somebody, when I mentioned this said, so what's your favorite color? It's not about that. It's, I, I don't really have a favorite color, to be honest. Colors are lovely. <laughs> I don't have a favorite. Um, it'd be like having a favorite friend. What's that all about? Are they your friends or not? Best friends, it kind of means the others are second rate, doesn't it? Um, the color of your life. It's more about what's, what is your life, you know? How are you gonna interpret this? What is the color of your life? What, what do you find in your life that's colorful? Um, and how could you interpret that? Now, David's given me a little thing he wants me to read out to you here. Think of all the colors you can find in the home. They can be natural colors or artificial. And don't be afraid to experiment either. You can be as creative as you want, looking at things through your lens, be it macro or wide angle, telephoto or fisheye. Be abstract if you want. Think color washes like a watercolor. Use camera movement or take a deliberately soft focus image. Anything that screams color will grab my attention. So color of life, how could we do that? Think, use your first building block of photography. Cameras don't take pictures, photographers take pictures. You have to think of the picture and then you work backwards from what you've thought up into the settings you need and how you need to set up the camera in order to take it. They're my seven building blocks of photography and there's a seven week course on that. And guys, if you're locked down thinking I'll go and buy a new camera, really, come on, go and invest in you because you are so much more important than the latest bit of kit. That is, it is you and investing in your skills because photography is a skill that brings up awesome pictures like we saw in last week's competition and I really reckon we'll see in this one. So I had a little think about this color. I like loud colors. I quite like red, it's not my favorite because I don't want to marginalize other colors, but I do kind of like red. What else is my life about? You know me, I'm a motorcyclist and I do photography and I like traveling. So I've rummaged around and found a few odds and sods and put them over here. Let's go see if we can do something. As always, I've got to wobble you because I am self filming. Uh, let's just go here. Look, let me show you. I've got a few things that I have put out on the table here. We've got 
a map. You know, the map kind of says travel, doesn't it? That's me, I like travel. We've got my old Nick on camera. Any of you who saw the Gary Go, Gary Goff, sorry, interview, you know, with me a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying, you know, about this camera, and I, I couldn't remember, I go, I don't know, it was a Nikon something. It was a really great camera. That is the Nikon something, it's an F3. That's what I was trying to remember. I don't really like tech, do I? So hence the Nikon F3. Motorcycling is just like the best thing ever. So I've dug out my old Davida crash helmet and goggles. Uh, it's a real genuine fiberglass Davida. It's the most comfortable crash helmet in the world. Travel as represented by maps. I've got a bit of color going on here. Pays de Loire, region in France, which I totally love. My best sister lives there. Uh, we go on long, long motorcycle rides across France every year. So. For me, it's all about that. And of course, we've got colors going on here. We've got red, we've got maps, we've got more maps going on over here. We've got all the colors in the map. So how could we do that? Now, I've played around with a couple of ideas. How did I have this earlier? I think I kind of had this. So how about if we had, I don't know, let's just lay that on the back. Let's go for a, a normal, you know, a straight down kind of a, something like this, you know? The light isn't terribly interesting. Let me get my, let me set you up and I'll get my Fuji going. Where's the Fuji? Come with me. Here it is. Let's grab the Fuji and take a picture because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Right. Put you, I think I'll put you here. How does that work? Me there, that's not terribly good. I'll put you on the corner there. How's that? That's not bad. I think that'll work. <clears throat> So we've got our ingredients, okay? We've got our ingredients, how are we gonna cook them? Well, we could do a flat thing, yeah? We got the, the camera, we got a crash helmet, we got goggles, let's, let's see. Just see how it looks. Can you see me if I stand up? Well, you can see enough, you know what's going on. So, oh, that does look quite nice. I'll see if I can video a little bit for you. Um, here we go. So look, straight away, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? You know, we can twist the camera around, we can change things. I quite like the Pay de Loire. What happens if we zoom out a little bit? We get in a bit more map, we don't really want. These are things to watch for. Look all, look all around the frame. Look at that great big waggly foot down there. You don't want one of those in your shot, do you? <clears throat> Remember, don't just look at the subject, look at the picture. That's not bad, but one of our problems, of course, is, let's turn the camera around. I really want to get a bit of hot camera action going on here. And the more I look at this, I'm thinking, look at that, you see, look at that angle. I kind of like that. I like the camera at an angle, sort of like that. We've got a little bit of map there. We've got motorcycle helmet, I like that. I don't want it too pristine because I'm not a pristine sort of a chap, am I? But we've got some colors here. We've got Pays de Loire. I don't like the angle that's at. So I'm just going to move it. <clears throat> Let's lift that up and I'm just going to tuck it a little bit under the helmet, see how that works. Let's see. Sorry to wobble you, that's better, isn't it? That's better, isn't it? Look, we got some mat, we got some camera, we got some crash helmet, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna quickly take that picture. What do we need to think about here? Anything in particular? Depth of field, do we need much depth of field? Well, you do a bit, don't you? Because look, we've got a bit of height, we got the top here of the crash helmet, which is at this sort of height, and then we've got this much depth of field down to the table. We have got a little depth of field issue here because also distance to subject is pretty close. So what's that gonna do to our depth of field? It's going to shrink it massively. <clears throat> so therefore we need what sort of an aperture? Think on that. We're gonna need probably a middling one. Yeah, to try and have the top of the helmet and the map sharp, we, we're probably gonna need probably a middle-ish aperture, somewhere around the F11 mark, I'm guessing. So now we've got to look at what our shutter speed's gonna to be to get the exposure. Well, let's have a little look. I need to, I'm gonna see if I can do this from the seated position. That's not bad. Right, looking through here, it is horribly dark. Am I back on photo mode? No, I'm not. Here we go. It looks horribly dark from here. So I'm going to just take a picture so you can see how horribly dark. It's nearly two stops underexposed. Not great. So how can we brighten that up? My shutter speed's already on an eighth of a second. 
Ooh, that's hurty, isn't it? But my ISO is only on just over 200, so let's whap that up. Let's really give that the beans. Oof, get in, look at that bad boy. Well, I think we're pretty good, 1600 ISO. Don't be afraid of a little bit of ISO, you know? Don't get hung up about these things. There's all these stuff online about a high, high ISO is bad, wicked and wrong. It isn't, it's just a high ISO. Let's, that's not bad, is it? I quite like that. Let's have a closer look. It's quite nice. It's a flat sort of a shot, but it is quite nice. What else could we do? How could we play around with this? And I'm not saying a still life like this is necessarily the answer for you. I'm just playing. What I am seeing here is, I don't know if I can bring this to life. Let me see. Look, we've got Nikon written on the front of my camera, but we've also got look, a goggle. Can I get the word Nikon to reflect? Can I do something with that? Will that work? I don't know. Um, I'm going to stop filming because, oh, hang on. Is it there somewhere? Oh, yes, it is. I've got a little bit of nick on there, but it's not great. I wonder if I turn that a bit. Not great. Not great. I'm going to try shooting it from this angle anyway. We'll see what happens. Then we're going to have a little go at being a little bit more avant-garde arty, as David had suggested. So what do I need to do? I think I'll leave you there. You're there in the background. It doesn't really matter. And at least you know I'm doing this for real because you're going to see yourselves, won't you? Let's increase the focal length a bit. I'm going to put a little bit of a tilt on this. Back to camera mode. You see, look, just to prove I'm doing it, there you are in the GoPro. <clears throat> if I tilt this a bit, I think it looks a little better, slightly tilted. Let's just try that. We've got a little bit of nick on reflection, but it's not much. They're not terribly shiny, these goggles. What about if we lift this up a little and extend the focal length a little? That, oh, that's interesting. Look, try these things out, try different angles. I think that's still sharp. I know I'm holding this camera an eighth of a second at arm's length. But also I'm kind of had a lot of practice at this. If you want to use a tripod, do so. Also, this little Fuji has got awesome image stabilizing, which I have got rocking and rolling. I just wanted to zoom in and make sure those shots are sharp because it'll be embarrassing, not big, funny or clever. If I put them up, they are sharp. How about something else? How about if we were to play around with a little bit of creative stuff? David said something about moving the camera, you know, playing around with movement. How about that? Well, what could we do? Let's put this thing on its back again. So what is the important part here? What, what would be important for me? Well, I kind of like the thought of Pays de Loire. So I'm going to move my composition around. Let's have a look. I'm going to put, I think we're going to be something like that. I like the word Pays de Loire here, so I'm going to kind of move it in here. Uh, I want to say something about, let's go to the Pays de Loire in France. Let's go for a bike ride. Do you know what I love about France? It is, it's kind of like during creation, when God made the world, somewhere around about, I think it was probably 10 to five on the sixth day. He suddenly went, we need someone to ride motorbikes. And he went out and he made France. That is what France is for. Let's have a look. That's not bad, is it? I kind of like that. I'm going to try for a little movementy thing. I think it's something like that. Anyway, let me see. What we're going to do is move the camera during the exposure and see what happens. So I need a slower shutter speed. I'm down at an eighth already. Hmm. So that might work. If I turn off image statement, no, I'm gonna leave it on. Let's focus somewhere. I like the word Pay de Loire. Let me see if I focus on that. Let me see. I'm gonna try zooming the lens a little as I, right, so there we go. And if I, oh, look, that's quite cool, isn't it? Now this, Zoom blur, oh, that one's very zoom blur, but nothing was sharp. You just have to play around quite a lot. I think it's too much, I'm zooming too much. That's better, isn't it? You see, we're starting to get, that's better, that's perfect. Let's close up. That's perfect. 
The words Pay de Loire are sharp. Look around the edges of the picture. We've got that little bit of blur, that bit of movement. When you're going somewhere, it's movement. That's what my colour of my life is. It's about travelling, it's about movement, it's about colour, it's about motorcycles and photography. So I'm doing a little bit of a life portrait thing here. You don't have to. Just go out and give it a go. Use the hashtag PLD life and please post your pictures onto the page. Entries have to be received before midnight UK time on Thursday because we need enough time to, for the judge to look through them, to make some selections and choices and then to tell me that I've got to put together the live broadcast and so that takes a lot of time and then we've got to be ready to rock and roll so that we can then do our live um, next week and we can tell you who the winner is and have a little chat through some of your awesome pictures. Thank you again and have a blast. Go for it guys, you're nailing this. Just keep going and I'll see you very soon.